guys. I'm talking about improving strength using different training velocities. force velocity curve. As you can see, there's an inverse relationship between force and velocity. And maximum strength, slowest velocity, speed, highest velocity, lowest amount of force. So the goal is to improve overall power. You have to train along this whole curve. If you just train max strength, what you'll see is the max efforts go up, but the speed goes down. And we don't want that. So I come from a West Side background. So the terminology I use is explosive strength, speed strength, strength speed. <coughs> this is measured in meters per second. We're talking about bar acceleration, or if you're just using body weight, measuring the speed of the bar. Um, explosive strength, that's greater than one meter per second. Speed strength is equal to 0.8 meters per second. That's one third the maximum velocity, and it's mechanical power. Strength speed, less than 0.8 meters per second, that's your max efforts. Coach, this uh, quote comes uh, right from your conversation with Louie on the podcast. You only have, if you have a car with three gears, why well, only use two? So basically his point is you gotta train all these different aspects of strength. Um, and in an untrained athlete, if you only improved their max strength, you would see an improvement in overall power. But once you get to elite level athletes, kids at the school, you gotta train speed strength and explosive strength as well. So, explosive strength, this is lightest loads, fastest rate of force development. If you're asking me, I think the best way to develop explosive strength is by jumping. You can just do body weight, you can add resistance, but the more resistance you add to this uh, jumping, you gotta understand that you're gonna be training, you're gonna have different effects. If you're adding a lot of weight, you're going to be improving more maximal strength, less explosive strength. Right. Accommodating resistance. Accommodating resistance prevents deceleration and maintains a constant velocity through the range of motion. My two favorite methods for accommodating resistance are chains and bands. What that does is, at a full, at the at your parallel depth, you're weaker than you are here at a half squat or at a quarter squat. So if you have bands on, attached to the bar, at the top, it's gonna be the heaviest because that's where you're strongest. When you get to the bottom, it'll be the least amount of resistance because that's where you're weakest. So the effect that has, if you, can keep, if you use it properly, you'll keep the bar speed at 0.8 meters per second throughout the whole range of motion. Same with the chains. And then you're training strength speed throughout the whole range of motion. When I was in college, my strength coach, if we wanted to do speed squats, we would just lighten up the bar. That's not correct because at the bottom, it'll be the correct percentage of your superior strength. But as you go up, the percentage of your maximal strength will actually be decreasing. So the bar is actually decelerating through the range of motion. Um, bands also promote overspeed centrics. You have to be careful about when you use them in your programming, but overspeed centrics the faster the bar goes down, the faster you're gonna go up. It's just simple physics. All right, speed strength. The nature of Olympic lifts just makes them promote speed strength. If you took the highest level Olympic lifters and measured the bar speed, you'd find an average right around 0.8 meters per second. Um, coming from a West, West Side background, I do speed squats, speed bench, speed so you got moderate loads at a high volume. Um, research has found that the best uh, range to train speed strength is between 75 and 85% of the one rep max. The way we do it at Westside, from a Westside program is a three week pendulum wave from 75%, 80%, 85%. And then you cycle back to 75% changing something in the lift, either the band tension, amount of chains, the bar that you're using, the depth that you're squatting to. Alright, so here's an example of how I would set up for a speed squat. I would use a three week wave from 50 to 55 to 60 percent of barbell weight using 25 percent added tension from bands or weight from chains. For bench it's a 
little bit different, 40, 45, 50% barbell weight with 35% chains. So if you add up those percentages, you'll find that there will be a three week wave between 75 and 85%. Strength speed. These are your max efforts. These are your heaviest loads, lowest volumes. Uh, 72 hours between max effort is optimal for CNS recovery. Uh, I put training optimally up there. What I mean by that is you're trying to break records, you're trying to set new maxes, but if every time you go for a max effort you end up failing on your last set, it's just going to take, it's going to do that much more damage to your muscles. You're going to have to take more, longer time to recover. So by training optimally, I mean get a new max that day and then save a little bit in the tank for next time. That way you're constantly improving. Um, and that's all I got, guys. So I'm opening up for questions. Okay, so what we want to do is with these presentations, we, we want to be uh, more you know, a discussion. You know, so having given your topic, what would be a discussion question? Um, I guess you could discuss the benefits of Olympic lifting versus using bands and chains on the squat or bench. Um, you could discuss different ways to develop explosive strength. I mean, I know all different variations of jumps. Um, you could discuss, uh, there's a lot of accommodations. You gotta be constantly changing the 